Hello guys, welcome back to Codelens, where we venture into the uncharted waters in matters software. If you are new to the channel, feel at home and be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you'll be notified when I post a new video. Now let's get to the objective of our today's episode where as you can see from my screen, this particular episode is going to, or basically series is going to focus on a practical step-by-step -step guide on how we can be able to create microservices. All right. Having said that, let us have a look at what we are going to have a look in this series. So, number one, we are going to see the definition of microservices. Why you should be able to, or basically, why should you consider using microservices? What are some of its bottlenecks? What should you expect in the series? The technology stack that we are going to use in this particular series. And finally, we are going to see how we can be able to build a real world project or application. Having said that, let us have a look at the first definition that I like to use as is defined by Martin Fowler, who says it is an approach to developing a single application as a suit of small services, each running in its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanism, often an HTTP resource API. Now, two key things to note, suit of small services, each running in its own process, right? Now, before I continue, let us have a second definition as defined by Sam Newman, who says, it is a small autonomous services that work together modeled around a business domain and can be independently deployed all right so from these two definitions we can be able to conclude that basically microservices it is highly maintainable and testable it should be loosely coupled it can be independently deployed it is organized around business capabilities and also let me add this it can be also owned by a small team let us have a look at an illustration of how a microservice kind of a diagram looks like now and as you can see from this screen we have a client we have an api gateway and we have microservice a b c to e now Going by the definition of Sam Newman, where we model around where, where we model a microservice around a business domain, in this particular image, let us assume we are working with an e-commerce kind of an application. So, modeling this application into a business domain, it means something like this. We could say that microservice A could be our payments microservice. B microservice B could be let's say our notifications uh microservice C maybe could be our orders microservice etc etc and each of these microservice A to E they are loosely coupled they are independent from each other all right so what this means is that in the event let's say microservice A goes down it does not necessarily mean that the whole kind of an application goes down all right we are going to see this in much more detail as we proceed in this particular series all right the next thing that we are going to have a look is why should we even consider using microservices number one as we mentioned earlier microservices are independently deployable and they allow for more team autonomy how is this the case you are going to find that each microservice can be deployed independently as needed hence enabling continuous improvement and faster application updates all right you are going to see that specific microservices can be assigned to specific dev teams which allows them to focus solely on one service or feature so maybe team a could be working on microservice a team b microservice b etc etc so this means that teams can work autonomously without worrying what's going on with the rest of application so this is what we mean by independently deployable and allow for more team autonomy 
Second benefit is that microservice can be independently scaled. How is this the case? You are going to see that as demand for an application increases, it becomes easier to scale well using microservices. You can increase resources to the most needed microservices rather than scaling an entire application. That's a huge plus. This also means that scaling is faster and often more cost efficient as well. All right. Number three, microservices are going to reduce downtime through fault isolation. What do I mean by that? If a specific microservice fails, you can be able to isolate that failure to that single service and prevent cascading failures that will cause maybe the application to crash, right? This kind of an isolation, it means that your critical application can stay up and running even when one of its modules fails, right? That's also another plus. The third, the fourth benefit that we are going to have a look at is that microservices have smaller code base which enables teams to more easily understand the code and hence making it simpler to maintain. All right. Basic, typically, you're going to see that while microservices have small code bases, all right, which is going to make uh, them easier to maintain and deploy, it's also much easier to keep the code clean and for teams to be wholly responsible for specific services. All right. Now, let us have a look at why a microservice is not a silver bullet. All right. As is the norm, each kind of a thing in life has its own pros and cons, right? Now, as far as the microservice is concerned, some of the bottlenecks that they have is that microservices, they create different types of complexities eh, as compared to monolithic applications, right? What do I mean? So, what do I mean by this? Number one, communication between services can be complex. Right, an application can include dozens or even hundreds of different services, and they all need to communicate securely. All right, number two, debugging becomes more challenging with microservice. All right, let's say you have an application consisting of multiple microservices, and with each microservice having its own set of logs, tracing the source of the problem can be a little bit difficult. Right, thirdly. Now, while unit testing may be easier with microservice, integration tests is not, right? Here is because the components are distributed and developers cannot test an entire system from the individual machines, right? Now, the second bottleneck that microservices have is interface control is even more critical. What do I mean by this? Each microservice has its own API which applications rely on to be consistent right now while you can easily make changes let's say to a microservice without impacting the external systems interacting with it if you change the interface in this case the api any application using that microservice will be affected if the change is not backwards compatible all right now a microservice architecture model is your, it also results in a large number of APIs, which are all crucial to the operation of an enterprise. Again, this also introduces where an interface control becomes mission critical, right? Now, thirdly, upfront costs may be higher with microservices. How is this the case? Now, for microservice architecture to work for you, or maybe in your organization or company, you need sufficient hosting infrastructure with security and maintenance support. You also need a skilled dev team who understand and manage all the services, right? Now, let's say you already have the, these things in place. Now, the costs involved in moving to microservices may be lower, but most enterprises that are currently, let's say, running a monolithic kind of an architecture, they will need to invest in the new infrastructure and developer resources in order to make the move. Another advantage that I did not mention is that you can be able to utilize a technology agnostic kind of an approach while using microservice. What do I mean by this? As we saw from our 
illustration of a microservice, you can be able to have microservice A being developed using Java, microservice B being developed using C Sharp, micro, microservice C being developed using Node, etc. and etc. So that's what I mean by tech agnostic, right? Now, let us proceed to the next item in our episode. Now, what should you expect in this particular course or basically series? We are going to demystify some of the topics that are supposedly termed as maybe complex. So some of them are, we have CQRS, which basically is command query responsibility segregation. We have event sourcing, which is basically atomically updating state and publishing events. We are going to have a look at messaging, right? So we're going to see how microservices can be able to asynchronously communicate with each other. We are going to have a look at how we can automate our build pipelines, right? So that's where the CI, CD comes into play. We are also going to have a look at security, which is also a very key thing as far as uh, our microservice architecture is concerned. We are going to have a look at logging. We are going to have a look at service discovery, which basically, which basically constitutes uh, automatic detection of services, say on a network, on a cluster, etc. We are also going to have a look at API gateway, right? Where basically a gateway is just, let's say, a reverse proxy, which is going to accept uh, all API calls. We are also going to have a look at persistence, version control system, and of course, containerization and orchestration all right so by the time this series will be coming to an end all these concepts you're going to have a deep understanding of how they work and the way they work all right let's go to the technology stack that we are going to be using in this particular series all right number one you're going to see that we are going to use RabbitMQ as our message uh, as our message broker. We are going to use PostgreSQL and MongoDB for persistence. So, of course, our PostgreSQL is going to be our RDBMS and MongoDB is going to be our NoSQL. We are going to use Ocelot as our preferred API gateway of choice. We are going to use HashiCorp Vault to manage our secrets so basically anything which your application deem to be sensitive in nature we will be able to see how hashicorp is going to help us secure those kind of our secrets we are going also to use hashicorp console where is going to help us in service discovery all right we are also going to use uh, docker and kubernetes of course, for containerization and orchestration. And in this case, we are going to use an abstraction, which is going to uh, kind of abstract some of the low-level stuff that comes with the Kubernetes. And in this case, Rancher is going to help us on that. As far as authentication and authorization is concerned, we are going to use Keyclock, all right? And of course, as far as our version control is also concerned, we are going to use Bitbucket, all right? Now, one thing that I would like to mention is that all these tools, at least 99% of them, they are going to be open source tools. And this series is not going to make you spend even a single dime. So do not uh, worry about costs for now. The aim here is to make sure that you grasp the fundamental aspects as far as a microservice and a, um, as far as microservice architecture is concerned all right so stick around for this we are going to deep dive into all these concepts now what are we going to build in this particular series we are going to build a movie ticketing app sounds simple but by the time we will have built this entire application we will have utilized all the core concepts that are involved in a microservice kind of an architecture all right so stick around for this one all right so having said that it is my hope that i'll see you in the next episode where we are going to, to start the hands-on kind of a thing as we now begin building our ticketing app so i'll see you on the next one 
गुड बाय